Hey guys, so in this video, I want to zoom out a little bit from the uh, little problem um, that I've been working on in my last couple of videos, uh, which is the uh, beatboxing to music converter. And I just want to zoom out and give you a bigger, bigger picture of how uh, artificial neural nets have actually been used or are being used to perform musical applications right now and actually give you a few little tools or toys that you can go ahead and use in your own music making processes. Okay, so the ones that we're going to look at here are going to be Jukebox by OpenAI. Then we'll also take a look at um, MuseNet, also by OpenAI. We'll take a quick look at some tools from Magenta, or uh, one specifically. And then we're also going to look at this program called IVA. Okay, so uh, let's get started here. So Jukebox, um, this is by a group called OpenAI, and this is a, um, a nonprofit that's focused just strictly on um, pushing the, the boundaries of artificial intelligence, um, and specifically machine learning. Um, and so what they have here, Jukebox, so let's just look at the description here. We're introducing Jukebox, a neural net that generates music, including rudimentary singing as raw audio in a variety of genres and artist styles. We're releasing the model weights and code along with a tool to explore the generated samples. Um, and so then they have, they actually published this as a uh, paper. Um, and then like a scientific paper, and then also um, they're sharing the, the code. Um, and so let's scroll down here. Um, and so here's what they, here's what they have. Um, so they have this, this neural network. And remember in uh, two videos ago, in my first video in the series, um, I talked about this idea from, from another paper that basically breaks down um, automated music generation into three different categories, right? So there's score, control or performance, and raw audio. And so this is working in raw audio. So what they've done is they've fed in a bunch of raw um, music audio to this algorithm. And then they're having it learn about that, that audio. Basically, uh, what does it take to make music? just out of audio samples. And then they're going to have that algorithm actually go ahead and, and produce new music of its own. Um, and so generally the way they do that is they tell it, uh, give me um, a song in a particular genre um, in the style of a particular artist. Or also they'll do um, a completion where they give it the beginning of a song and then they say, okay, go ahead and extend this. And so that's called conditioning uh, the model. So let's go ahead and look at some of their results here. Um, so let's play uh, blues rock in the style of Joe Bonamassa. Okay, so that's actually pretty impressive. Um, they're just working in raw audio, and um, the AI is actually also writing these lyrics and then singing the lyrics too. And um, I mean, you're probably not going to pop that into your MP3 player. No one even uses those anymore. But anyways, you're, you're, you're not going to download this and listen to it over and over again. Um, but like it sounds like music um, and it actually sounds like singing and you can recognize some words from it. Um, and so the fact that this is just done in raw audio is pretty crazy. Let's take a look at one more here. It's 
It's Christmas time and you know what that means. Oh, the touch of time as I like the tree this year will be a time. Okay, so you can see here it says lyrics from Hot Tub Christmas, co-written by a language model and open AI, open AI researchers. Um, so they're doing some sort of human in the loop stuff here where it's not just strictly the algorithm. Um, but still, we know that the audio of both the instruments and the singing is done by the AI. So this is a really cool result. Um, so here you can see explore all samples. That'll take you over here to this window. And they have a lot of samples here that you can uh, that you can check out and you can sort of filter them by different parameters. Um, so I encourage you to check this out. It's, it's pretty neat. And um, just imagine where this will go like in a year or two, um, especially because I think they said they're going to share the the model weights and code. Yeah, so it would take some some effort, I think, to go ahead and adapt this into your own music project. But um, you know, if you have the ability, you should definitely go ahead and try to do that. So here's they also release um, a version of this as a Google Colab Notebook called Interacting with Jukebox. So I've talked about Colab Notebooks uh, in my last video, video number two in this series. This is video 2.5 or 3, haven't decided yet. Um, but basically you can go in here and you can um, tell it which artist from their database you want it to sound like the genre, and then you can also give it some some lyrics. And so this is what you're going to condition the the network on. Um, so conditioning the network or conditioning the model, like I said before, it just means you you give it something to start with, and then it goes and generates something uh, from that. Um, so I'll put a link to this in the description, and if you're curious, you can play around with it. Um, so. Look, there's a note here. Please note this next upsampling step will take several hours, right? So what what they do in this in this piece of software is they um, they kind of they abstract the music into a sort of simpler representation to where um, there's like less data per minute, and then they use um, their model to then upsample that, right? So to add more uh, data, and and that step. Is what takes uh, several hours so if you have the time um, to play with this I mean you don't actually have to sit and watch it for several hours uh, but you do want to kind of be aware of what's going on um, in any case this is jukebox let's go ahead and move on to the other open AI project that I want to show you which is called MuseNet um, okay so here this is also by open AI uh, we've created MuseNet a deep neural network that can generate four minute musical compositions with 10 different instruments and can combine styles from country to Mozart to the Beatles. MuseNet was not explicitly programmed with our understanding of music, but instead discovered patterns of harmony, rhythm, and style by learning to predict the next token in hundreds of thousands of MIDI files. So, right, so a MIDI file, if you make uh, music on your computer, you probably know this is sort of. Um, the very basic uh, file type for for music scores. So that's where you have all your your musical notes um, and um, all of that data in your MIDI files. So they got just like they said, hundreds of thousands of MIDI files, um, most of which I'm sure could be found online. And they fed this into a neural net um, in order to learn. So here, remember, you've got score, control, and audio. Jukebox works in audio, and this works in score. So this is like two layers down. Um, so when they're generating music, they have to generate the score, and then that has to go into another um, 
piece of software to actually then turn that into into uh, music audio. Um, and you can see that they're using uh, what they call a large scale transformer model. So this is a more recent type of neural net that's um, Jukebox, I think, also uses that, um, but this is just something that's been invented in the last couple of years, and um, there's like a, an explosion of applications um, for this type of neural net right now. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, going to actually skip over their samples, and I'm going to come down to their interactive part here. Um, so they have a couple different options for how to interact with this right in the browser, so I definitely uh, encourage you to take a look at this. Um, you can either just choose a um, an artist style that you want, and then a um, a piece of music that you want to start with. So that's the those are the basic settings, and then there's advanced settings that I'll show you in a minute. So what I did here was I just chose Mozart as the style, and then Beethoven's Fur Elise as the uh, starting notes. So you can see that then it generated this score. So here's the intro. And then here's um, the rest of the score that it generated. And it gives you a few of these at a time so that you can sort of choose from them. I'm going to actually uh, cherry pick here. Um, I'll just say that not, ev not everything that it does really sounds super great. So here you can see it's using two different instruments. It's the purple is the piano. Yellow is, is uh, violins. Um, this one's kind of bad. And then this one is also... Um, you know, this one I'll play a little bit of it for you. So you can see it's kind of interesting. It has that flourish at the beginning, and then it has this dramatic um, bass line, um, very staccato piano notes and then later on it does some interesting stuff but overall um, it's kind of boring this this bit and and this is the thing is that uh, these models aren't perfect yet uh, they have they have a long way to go they don't they don't really know what's interesting about music or how to really make good music they're just um, like pattern recognition and 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 then and then they generate new patterns based on what they based on what they know but there are some interesting results from this. So I'll show you this one. So it has kind of a funny ending there. But you can see that one, that one doesn't just get super repetitive. And you can see, you can both hear and see that it is carrying forward some of the structure of the, the intro and sort of uh, responding to it or, or extending it. We'll just do one more here.
Okay, I'll go ahead and stop that there because it does get a little bit more uh, repetitive. But you can see this is writing some pretty interesting stuff. And I, I don't think it's just um, regurgitating like actual music that it's seen. Uh, in other words, it's not just memorizing the music and, and then repeating it. Um, but it really appears to be uh, like riffing on the ideas that you're that you're giving to it. Um, okay, so I want to check out also the uh, advanced settings here. And so this is really cool because what you can actually do is upload your own MIDI file, right? So you could actually go and write a song or write a little piece of music in MIDI and then upload it here. What I've, got, uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and um, downloaded this Mega Man 3 title screen uh, MIDI file from, from BitMIDI. And they actually, in another part of the blog post, they say that they actually um, use the BitMIDI um, library um, to train MuseNet. And so then they have this, this style selection, which includes video games. So I'm going to go ahead and play you some of what it's generated based on um, part of this Mega Man file. So I went into Reaper and, and cut this down, cut down the Mega Man um, theme to my favorite part and then fed that in. Um, you can see it's longer than the, uh, the Beethoven intro. Um, again, uh, I won't show you everything because one of the things that it ended up doing was actually um, just repeating what I put into it. But it actually makes sense. I'll, I'll play you this one right now. <laughs> So you can see it just uh, repeated the the beginning of this track, um, and in this case, it actually makes sense because it's I gave it kind of a very um, uh, a short bit, but that actually makes a good loop, and so it didn't really sound awkward there um, when it transitioned from the intro to the to the uh, completion. Um, so one thing that could be going on here is that it actually did see this track in its training, um, and so it recognizes it. Um, and then the other thing that could be going on is it recognizes where um, a good place to end a phrase is and a good place to repeat that phrase. In any case, it, in this one, it just repeated it. Um, the second one, I'm not going to play this because what it is is here's the intro, and then there's this weird empty space and then it goes back into a repeat of the intro so that's kind of that's kind of funky um and then i think the last one did something similar you can see the same structure of the intro being repeated here just with this extra note added um so something's going on with that but i did want to play this third one for you so i'll play that from the beginning So that's a lot more interesting. Um, and I, I listened to this track before I uploaded it. Um, and I, I don't think I don't think that that just came from the track. I don't think that's memorized. I think that it came up with that phrase there. Um, uh, if you are more familiar with this or you want to check it out more, um, do some investigative work here. Um, please let me know. But I. I think that it invented this this whole section, um, which is an interesting section. I mean, this um, the intro kind of comes to a a nice place to stop or to to transition, um, 
and then it 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 changes the the key or changes at least the chords that it's playing and has this like really nice creative melody so i i was pretty excited by this so you can actually download um the results of what you create as either a um an audio file or you can download the the midi which <clears throat> might be more useful if you download the midi then you can put it into your digital audio workstation um, and synthesize it with another instrument. Check this out. Check this out. Make some make some melodies. Um, co-create with this AI. I, I I think it's pretty awesome. Okay, I have a couple more things. I know this video is getting a little on the long side, but there's just so much cool stuff to show you. Um, so now I'm going to show you Magenta. So Magenta, this is a team um that's sort of a sub team of google ai and so these folks have made a lot of neural based uh, audio software and what they have here let's see what they have here are a bunch of demos of this software and they're in a, a bunch of different collections here so you can see they've created some hardware they've created some uh native applications they have some collab notebooks and then they have what's called Magenta JS, and then community contributions. And these are kind of similar, except um, this collection is built by the team themselves, Magenta, and then this collection is built um, by the community. So I'm going to show you one tool from the community section here. You can see there's a bunch of stuff. There's just, it's just really interesting stuff. Um, come to this page, play with these demos, um, get an idea for what's possible with this stuff. And if you're a programmer, like dive into these APIs and, and use them. Um, I just want to show you this one. It's called Tenori Off. And I already have it loaded over here. Okay, so what this is, um, is it's, you know, inspired by the Tenori on drum machine, but it's using machine learning. And what it will do is, so I can create a little uh, basic pattern here. Um, okay, so let's play that. And then you click improvise here and it creates a drum beat to go along with it. And all right, I don't want to spend too too long on this. Just come and play with it. Just 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 play with it. Make some music. It's fun. Um okay. Let's see, so that's Tenori off. It's part of Magenta. Um, let's move to the last tool here. I wanna show you this. Um, so this is uh, called Iva, and um, this is less of a, like a research organization like OpenAI or Magenta. Um, this is a company that's just making a product here. It, you can see it's in beta. Um, and they're gonna want me to say everything that I'm gonna show you was made using Iva. Um, I think they have the, the copyright to it because I'm a free tier user. But this is really interesting. It's basically the same thing as MuseNet, um, but it gives some different results. Um, okay, so what I've done here is I've uploaded um, a couple of things here, one by Vivaldi and one by Bach. Um, and so I've, again, conditioned the model to give me some comp uh, compositions using these. So I'm just gonna show some of these to you. Uh, let's see. Okay, so before I do, I'll, I'll say, not everything that this produces is super interesting, just like with MuseNet. Um, in particular, I think that the sort of built-in um, uh, database of, of what they call influences doesn't really give super great results, but I was pleasantly surprised when I uploaded some of my own um, influences here. So I'll show you the results of some of these. So this this is influenced by, by Bach, Toccata, and Fugue.
play the next one. Okay, that one's bad. Like I said, they're not all good. Okay, so... Uh, pause. There we go. Right, so you can just sit here and just... You just tell it, create a new track with this influence just over and over again. It'll just make a bunch of stuff. Um, it doesn't take that long. Sign up for an account, get into the beta, try this. It's pretty fun. Um, okay, now I want to show you the Vivaldi. And I'll just show you one of these, and then we'll wrap this up. Um, so let's see. Let's play this, and then... Here we go. Okay, the first thing that I want you to notice, because I just noticed this, is that um, up here at the top, there's actually these sections. So, okay, does this sound completely like Vivaldi? No. Does it sound like music? Kinda, yeah, actually. Um, so what they're doing is they're going kind of one, one above MuseNet, and they appear to be actually kind of engineering in some features about uh, music theory. Um, so they're giving this some structure. So there's an A part, B part, bridge, A prime, B prime. Um, so that's why you can hear that it actually seems to have some logical uh, movement. Um, so I think this is pretty impressive. I don't know exactly how they're doing this. Uh, you, you can tell the difference between um, the piece influenced by by Bach and the piece influenced by Vivaldi and I think that's pretty neat. Um, so you can go to a website. So I went to kunsterfugue.com. That's what came up on Google. Um, but there are a lot of places like BitMIDI to get MIDI files and then you can play with this. So go get some MIDI files, put them into IVA, put them into MuseNet and just see what comes up. And let me know if you do that in the comments. Um, or if you're connected with me on social media, send me something. I'm really curious to see uh, what my community ends up doing with this stuff. Uh, last thing I want to say, if you Google AI music, um, there's quite a bit of stuff that comes up. So the year 2020, um, like not, not all of these are AI musicians, um, but like Holly Herndon, um, Spawn, Sweaty Machines, um, these are all, oh, you can see Iva down here. These are all um, artists that are using AI to make music. So I think that we're just at the very beginning of an explosion here. Um, AI touches everything, and eventually I think this is going to be a really big deal. So if you're curious about it, if you're interested, there's so much free stuff that you can just go and, and play with. So I would really encourage you to do that. Um, and... Remember, stick with it and be patient. 
It'll pay off when you start to see your imagination become reality. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to help other people find this channel if you, if you like this, and I'll see you next time.